The test is in four part, part 1, part 2, part 3, and part 4. Now look at part 1. Part 1 You will hear a conversation between a psychiatrist in the medical center of the college and a new student. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. Now listen carefully to the conversation and answer questions 1 to 4. Hello, sit down please. Thank you. Now, you are a new patient, aren't you? Y yes, that's right. OK, so I'd better get some basic details down first. Right, we'll start with your name. Martin Hansen. Do you spell that S-O-N or S-E-N? H-A-N-S-E-N. OK, and you're a first-year student? Yes, I am. Study in? Uh, electronics, actually. Ah, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks. And your address? Uh, 2805 Hesperian Avenue, Hayward. 2805 and Hesperian. Yes, that's H-E-S-P-E-R-I-A-N. Hayward, H-A-Y-W-A-R-D. And your phone number? 734-246-55. 734-26455. No, you got the 6 and the 4 the wrong way round. It's 24655. Huh? Sorry. Right. And um, when were you born? Uh, the 15th of June, 1986. Here in New Zealand? No, I was born in Sydney. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen to the conversation and answer questions 5 to 10. Good. So, what's your problem? Well, frankly, I wonder whether it is a problem. I get the blues, and it lasts for quite a while. I don't know how to... Yes, we all feel sad or get the blues now and again. Generally, our sadness lessens in time and with the support of friends. However... If the depression leads to difficulty in thinking and greatly disrupts your daily routine, it can be evidence of a psychiatric problem. What do you feel exactly? I always feel sad and worthless. I find it hard to fall asleep and wake up early in the morning. How long has it lasted? Nearly half a month. Do you feel fatigue or loss of energy? Or... You may have lost interest or pleasure in usual activities. Yes, sometimes. At first I thought I could overcome it by myself, but I failed, and then... I'm so glad that you came here. It seems that you are suffering mild depression from your symptoms. Depression? Yes, I feel depressed sometimes. But why would I... Depression may occur as a result of biochemical changes in the body. Alcohol, amphetamines, cocaine and LSD can bring on depression. Those who have a family history of depression usually have a greater risk of depression. Sometimes the worrying changes in life can lead to depression. I see. I had a really bad breakup of a love relationship. It makes me feel hopeless. Do you think I need some treatment? Yes. Antidepressant medications are often used to treat depression, if it is serious. But I don't suggest them at first because of the side effects. I suggest psychotherapy, which can give you support and help you regain control. So do I need to come here every day? No, I will arrange counselling sessions for you, which will last 12 to 20 weeks. You come here once or twice each week. The psychotherapy is directed at helping you gain insight and understanding about events in your life, which may have contributed to your depression. With growing insight, you can often learn more effective ways of coping with your feelings and changing your behaviour. What can I do to take care of myself? Well, 
At first, you should do some physical exercises on a regular basis, at least three times a week. How is your food? Do you eat well? Yes, I think so. I eat at my homestay family. Good. Find a hobby or a positive recreational activity to participate in once or twice a week. I know it's difficult for you, though. When you feel it's hard to overcome the depression, come to the counselling session. Remember, ask for help if the load is too heavy to handle. Yes, I'll try. So, when will my counselling session begin? I'm going to arrange that for you. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. Listen to the conversation between two students, John and Carol. They have a list of the names of authors whose books have been given to the library. They have to classify the authors as writers of cookery, sports, or travel books. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to fifteen. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. This is a great collection of books, isn't it? Very impressive. Who gave them to us? Apparently the donor was a book reviewer. There are a lot of books about sport. Here's one. My Life in Cricket. Well, that's certainly sports. Who's the author? Peter Adams. He also wrote Journeys Through Spain. Did he? Peter Adams writes books on both sports and travel, so S-T is written against his name. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Now listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 8. This is a great collection of books, isn't it? Very impressive. Who gave them to us? Apparently the donor was a book reviewer. There are a lot of books about sport. Here's one. My Life in Cricket. Well, that's certainly sports. Who's the author? Peter Adams. He also wrote Journeys Through Spain. Did he? Next one is Stephen Bow. He wrote Summer Barbecues, Cooking for Singles, Dinners by Candlelight. Anything else? No. Do you have anything by Pam Campbell? Wanderings in Greece, My Life in Russia, Travels in the Amazon, and Pam Campbell's Guide to a Successful Trip. Oh, sounds like she got around. My next one is C. Ketsik. He has a list of books about football, the World Cup, Heroes of the World Cup, Playing with the Round Ball, Soccer for Everyone. That's enough. He was a one-topic writer. Ari Hussain, however, wrote about cooking and travel. His series of cookbooks is called Living and Cooking in Spain, Living and Cooking in China, Living and Cooking in Brazil. He's been everywhere. I've got a specialist here, Sally Innes on tennis. Here are some of her titles. Improve Your Serve, Tennis for Everyone, Tennis Forever. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. 
Sally Innes on tennis. Here are some of her titles. Improve Your Serve, Tennis for Everyone, Tennis Forever. Meg Jorgensen has three books, one in each category. Cooking for Health, Sport is Good for You and Travelling in Australia. A varied talent. Who's next? Bruno Murray. He wrote children's books. A whole series called The Child's Guide Too and then The Name of the City. Oh, you mean like A Child's Guide to London? Yes, that's right. He seems to have stayed in Europe. Ruby Lee, however, has just one book. It's called The Emerald Isle, and it's all about Ireland. Apparently she went around Ireland on foot. Jim Wells wouldn't like that. His books are all about motor racing. Hmm, nice photos of old racing cars. Don't you love the goggles on the driver? They do look strange, don't they? I think we're nearly finished. What did Helen Young write? Summer menus. Food for thought. She also did a book of Chinese recipes. Cantonese, I think. OK. That's dealt with the first box. Let's stop for a minute. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. The black bear, or Ursus americanus, has a wide range inhabiting forested areas of North America, including Canada, the United States, and parts of northern Mexico. Black bears are omnivores, getting their nutrition from a wide variety of plants and animals. The particular foods any one bear eats depends on what's available in the area where that bear lives, as well as on the season of the year. Generally speaking, plant foods make up 90% of the bear's diet. The rest of its meals consist of animal foods, such as insects and fish. Bears have a relatively long gestation period. Mating takes place in the spring or early summer, but bear cubs aren't born until the following winter. Usually, two cubs are born at a time, although some litters may have as many as five cubs. Bear cubs are dependent on their mother and may stay with her for close to two years. Wild black bears can live as long as 25 years. They've lived for as long as 30 years or more in captivity. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. Much of the black bear's range coincides with the range of its close cousin, the grizzly bear. Although these bears are somewhat similar in appearance and habits, it isn't difficult to tell the difference between them. Colour isn't necessarily a distinguishing characteristic, 
as both species of bears occur in a range of colours from almost blonde to dark brown or black. Many black bears, however, have a patch of fur on their chests that's lighter in colour than the rest of their fur. Grizzly bears don't have this patch. Size isn't always a distinguishing feature either, although grizzly bears are usually heavier with an average weight of 225 kilos. Black bears average 140 kilos in weight. Grizzly bears spend time digging in the ground for roots and tubers that make up part of their diet. The large muscles they need for this give them a distinct shoulder hump. This hump is absent in black bears, which don't do the same kind of digging. The shape of the face and ears is also different in each species of bear. Grizzly bears have a depression between the eyes and nose and short round ears. Black bears, on the other hand, have a straighter profile and longer, more pointed ears. Grizzly bears are known for their fearsome, long, sharp claws. Black bears have shorter claws, which are better suited for climbing trees. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. You are going to hear some facts and figures about Australia. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Now I should tell you that the country of Australia is made up of six states and two territories. These are the Australian Capital Territory, New South Wales, the Northern Territory, Queensland, South Australia, Tasmania, Victoria and Western Australia. The national capital is Canberra. Right, let's turn to the Australian economy. Australia has a prosperous Western-style capitalist economy. Australia is a major exporter of agricultural products, minerals, metals, and fossil fuels. Commodity prices have a big impact on the economy. Australia suffered from the low growth and high unemployment typical of the OECD countries in the early 1990s, but the economy has expanded at reasonably steady rates in recent years. In addition to high unemployment, short-term economic problems include how to balance output and inflation and how to stimulate exports. The economy is made up like this. Agriculture, 3.1%. Industry, 27.7%. Services, 69.2%. The labor force has a similar pattern. The total labor force is 8.2 million. 34% work in finance and services. 23% work in public and community services. 20% work in the wholesale and retail trade. 17% work in manufacturing and industry. And 6% work in agriculture. What are the chief industries of Australia? They are mining, industrial, and transport equipment, food processing, chemicals, and steel. 
What are Australia's main agricultural products? They are wheat, barley, sugarcane, fruit, cattle, sheep, and poultry. And who do we sell our products to? At present, our chief export market is Japan, which takes 24% of our exports. After that, South Korea takes 8%, and New Zealand and the U.S. each take 7%. In years to come, however, we expect China to become a significant trade partner. China already supplies 5% of Australia's imports. This is the same amount as New Zealand. Meanwhile, we take one fifth, in fact, 22% of our imports from the U.S., 17% from Japan, and 6% from the U.K. So, what sort of things does Australia import? Well, we import a lot of machinery and transport equipment, especially computers and office machines. Also, telecommunications equipment, and in addition, we have to import oil and petroleum products. So let's move to the subject of communications in Australia. We have an estimated 8.7 million telephones and 9.2 million televisions. There are some 134 television broadcast stations and 325 radio stations. The related subject of transport is naturally very important in such a big country as Australia. Let's look at highways first. There are two kinds of highways: paved and unpaved. Paved highways are regular roads with a permanent surface, but actually we have more unpaved highways, around 60 percent, than paved, when all the country roads are included. In addition, Australia has a railway network of over 38,000 kilometers. But you'll probably find it hard to believe how many airports we've got: 10, 20, 50. No, the total is 443. Of course, this includes many short runways on farms and in the outback. There are only nine airports with runways of more than 3,000 meters. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. That is the end of the test. You now have ten minutes to transfer your answers to your IELTS listening answer sheet. <laughs>